Before we start, another YouTube channel shout out. This one goes to Cherry Pizza in his series The Oz Chronicles, which is how I first learned about this film. Thanks Cherry Pizza. Now, on to the review. Time to go down under mate as we explore this amazing piece of obscure Oz exploitation. And no, that's not an exploitation genre revolving around the land of Oz, as awesome as that would be. Ozploitation is a genre of crazy films made in Australia during the 1970s, since Oz is a colloquial name for Australia. With all the ginormous, one-of-a-kind species of animals that can easily kill you down there, it's not a hard association to make. Anyway, in the psychedelic era of the late 60s, bizarre children's stories such as Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz were getting rediscovered and appreciated by the drug culture of the time. The 70s gave birth to glam rock, progressive rock, and the concept album as we know them today. Combine those elements together, throw some shrimps on the Barbie and all those cliched phrases, and you get Oz, a rock and roll road movie, released in the United States as 20th Century Oz for some reason. The story uses the 1939 film as its structural basis, up to and including shiny red shoes instead of silver ones. However, it has no supernatural elements to it, and Oz is more like the Australian Outback, fitting the Oz nickname I mentioned earlier. Dorothy's three companions are a dim-witted surfer, the Scarecrow, a cold-hearted mechanic, the Tin Man, and a not-so-tough biker, the Cowardly Lion. Glynn, not Glinda, Glynn, is the owner of a used clothing store who gives Dorothy the sequin shoes. The Wicked Witch has been replaced with a nasty truck driver who wants revenge on Dorothy for killing his brother. The Wizard is a David Bowie-esque glam rock star that Dorothy wants to see in concert, so her quest is to journey across the Australian outback to see him on his farewell tour. I really enjoyed this film. For a film called Oz A Rock and Roll Road Movie, it gave me exactly what I was looking for. It had the Australian outback, a kick-ass rock soundtrack, a lot of Australian slang, and it used The Wizard of Oz as a structural aid to tell its own grounded rock and roll story rather than doing a strict adaptation. I think this was a genius move because it allowed for the film's low budget to work for it rather than against it. If it tried to pull off supernatural elements and effects without the money to make them look convincing, the whole movie would have fallen apart. This film is the first one that we've looked at that's made for adults, including swear words and just the teensiest flashes of nudity, although I've seen PG-13 Mike Myers comedies that were far, far raunchier. The songs are fantastic, and it shows off what I guess the Australian Outback looked like back in 1976. It's not necessarily for everyone, and I wouldn't call it deep, but I think most of you would be surprised by how much you can get into it, if you can find it, that is. I haven't been able to find a single copy of this film on DVD or Blu-ray that wasn't a bootleg. I ended up watching it on YouTube from some generous soul who uploaded it. However, if you are able to find it, definitely check it out. I think you'll be surprised. 